The history of Google. PhD students Larry Page and Sergey Brin began Google as a research project in January 1996 while attending California Stanford University. By developing a technology called PageRank, they were able to create a search engine that could estimate a website's importance based on its incoming links. Initially nicknamed Backrub, the Google.com domain name was registered on September 15, 1997 and the company incorporated on September 4, the next year. Its initial public offering came on August 19, 2004, though the founders and then-CEO Eric Schmidt remained in control. As a result of the IPO, many of the company's employees became paper millionaires, and this led some to wonder if Google would live by its Don't Be Evil motto. Like many Silicon Valley startups, Google was first based out of a garage. Today, its corporate headquarters is in Mountain View, California. Known as the Googleplex, the offices perpetuate an informal and casual atmosphere. Employees are encouraged to spend 20% of their time on personal interests, and this has led to the creation of services such as Google News and AdSense. Google's most popular service is its online search engine, Google Search. Users employ this tool to look for information by typing keywords into the search bar. The incoming results come from the billions of web pages the company indexes, and the order of the results is partly based on page rank. Google has expanded its search results and paid listings onto other websites through AdSense. AdSense and AdWords form the engine of Google's multi-billion dollar revenue machine. Apple Computers was founded by Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak in Cupertino, California on April 1, 1976. Wozniak was the engineer behind the computers, while Jobs had the mind for business. The pair struggled to keep the company afloat in early days, however, they succeeded in funding the venture without ever giving up shares in the company. Apple's first product was 1976's Apple I. Compared to its competition, this machine used few components. This was mainly due to the company's limited budget. This made the Apple I a feat of engineering, and it remained on the market until late 1977. The upgraded Apple II was first sold in June of that year. Ready to go right out of the box, it was a huge success commercially and is recognized for establishing the market for home computers by being accessible and affordable. The Apple II remained the company's main source of revenue for many years, and by the end of 1980, over 100,000 had been sold. 1980's Apple III was prone to overheating and was a failure for the company. However, 1980 was also the year Apple went public. The company generated more millionaires than any other before it, and the popularity of its founders was increasing. Meanwhile, Apple was busy at work designing the Apple Lisa. Released in June 1983, it proved to be a powerful concept and not a market success. However, it pioneered such terminology as the mouse, icon, and desktop. It was also Apple's first graphical user interface model, which meant consumers interacted with images rather than text commands. Apple's next triumph came during the Super Bowl in January 1984. The 1984 commercial kind of showed a you know, free-running person overturning somebody who's dictating, this is the way it's going to be, you know, there's only one word, you have no free thought of your own. That was sort of the theme of that commercial. This ad introduced the Apple Macintosh to the American public and is now considered one of the prime examples of U.S. advertising. It was just one part of Apple's aggressive and expensive advertising campaign for the launch of the Macintosh computer, which was released just a few days later. The Mac was loved by some and hated by others. Because of its radical differences from the rest of the market, it initially suffered from a lack of software. It was even incompatible with the popular Apple II. Eventually, an affiliation with Adobe helped the Mac brand become the standard for computer users in specific industries. So all the artists and the video people and the producers and the movie people all got into Macintoshes and once you're into it, you love it so much, it's very difficult to pry you away. Despite Apple's success, problems within the company forced Steve Jobs to leave in 1985. Steve Wozniak left in 1987, though he is still a paid employee. 
Meanwhile, Apple continued to market its two brands to different pieces of the population. The Apple II series was best for home users, while more experienced professionals tended towards the Macintosh. However, by the 1990s, Apple was struggling. IBM was handily winning the marketplace on the success of Windows. At the end of 1996, Apple purchased Steve Jobs' new company, Next, and brought the founder back into the fold. Jobs went on to become CEO of Apple, and in December 1997, he introduced the online Apple Store. That same year, the company announced a partnership with rival Microsoft that saw Apple adopt Microsoft Office and Internet Explorer as part of its default programs. Apple's revival began with the release of the iMac in 1998. The company emphasized aesthetic design as one of its major strengths. 2001 was the year Apple opened its first retail stores, introduced iTunes, and released the first iPod to the public. It kicked off a decade that boasted a steady upswing for the company, with the release of a number of new products and operating systems. Bill Gates, born William Henry Bill Gates in 1955, is one of the wealthiest men in the world, not to mention author and chairman of Microsoft, the software company he founded with Paul Allen. What got Gates started was after reading the January 1975 issue of Popular Electronics that demonstrated the Altair 8800, Gates contacted Microinstrumentation and Telemetry Systems, MITS, the creators of the microcomputer, to inform them that he and others were working on a basic interpreter for the platform. Gates and Allen did not have an Altair, nor had they written a code for it. The idea was to simply gauge MIT's interest. After meeting with the MITS president, Ed Roberts, Allen began working for them. Shortly after, Gates left Harvard to join Allen at MITS. They named their partnership Microsoft and started their first office in Albuquerque. In 1980, IBM approached Microsoft to write a basic interpreter for its upcoming personal computer. Microsoft eventually agreed to write it, and the software MS-DOS that was made for IBM made Microsoft a major player in the computer industry. Microsoft launched its first retail version of the Microsoft Windows on November 20, 1985. Microsoft borrowed ideas from Apple's Lisa and Mac operating systems. One could hardly make a computer with a mouse, windows, and icons without doing a little borrowing from the brilliant Apple designs but it's not true that Microsoft signed agreements to pay for the use of any part of Apple's interface.